Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. It's time for the 2019 Minnesota Duck Hunting Opener. It's time to head to duck camp. I was going to leave to go up to duck camp uh, before it got light out this morning, but then last night we got news that Zachary and Samantha have their little baby girl. So I waited until 7 o'clock because that'll put me up there by, at the hospital at about 8 o'clock this morning so I can see the baby and then from there um, I'm going straight up to duck camp. Turn left, then turn right. Okay everybody, let's go see the new baby Jensen. Oh yeah, when they were doing it. Mm -hmm. And then we could tell something was wrong because they done not to. Oh. I wonder what that means. I mean, they're stunned because it was a C-section, or uh, I, that's kind of how they made it sound. <laughs> All right, well, I'm back on the road headed north to duck camp. It was really nice seeing the little baby. Her name is Rose Dixie Jensen. She was 9.4 pounds when she was born. She had to do a C-section. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Now the crib will get some use. Just skirting along the side of Lake Mille Lacs right now. My dad came up earlier this morning and he was uh, gonna stop, take a left right here and there's a uh, He's got a friend they used to, he always, they hunted together all over in different states. He would always be up there deer hunting with them at the cabin. And uh, now he just stops up and sees them pretty much once a year on the way up duck hunting. but are now entering the most boring 50 miles of the state of Minnesota between Aiken and Grand Rapids. Definitely not duck hunting weather. close now. I don't know if uh, you guys watched the video where I was packing for duck hunting, but Zachary of course is not coming up. Sarah is not coming up either. She just got back from Las Vegas. Her schedule is very busy right now. So I didn't even bring up the big tent this year. I brought up my new fish house and last year I put that stove jack in it and that's what I'm going to use for my tent. my dad's truck. Looks like he has his camp all set up. I just stopped and talked to my dad. See Chris and Teresa have everything set up there. I'll stop and talk to them for a minute before I go unload the... Uh... Oh, like I was saying, I did uh, stop by and talk to Chris and Teresa and they were all grouse hunting this morning and they didn't see anything. I did even see one when I was driving in here. They said I should have stopped and shot it because that's all <laughs> they haven't seen anything yet. It's just miserable warm out right now. I think I'll drive up to the boat landing and turn around so I can back down and unload the canoe.
Chris and Teresa already paddled out there and remember last year it was solid rice which was different than the year before. This year they said there's hardly no rice out there. I think I'll probably paddle out probably tomorrow. Duck hunting doesn't open till for two days so I have all day tomorrow to uh, check things out. I got everything unloaded off the trailer. Now I'm gonna just go park it over by dad's camp here and then there's a wasp nest right by the where I drive in there. So I'm just gonna put the trailer here and I'll just back my truck in over there. Teresa came over here earlier and used the weed whipper, weed eater thingy to take out all the ferns, so that looks nice. I'm not even gonna hook this thing up yet. I mean, it's way too hot out. So, I mean, I'm not even gonna bother opening up this yet and putting in that stove jack until we absolutely need it. Took about 20 minutes to figure out how to get around copyright violation. <laughs> Cover up the name.
I think that'll be enough for now. Tomorrow is supposed to be another nice day. Nice day if you're not up hunting. It's supposed to get to maybe 80. And then rain tomorrow night, so I'll still have time to cut more wood tomorrow. Well, now you've got the cabins, you know how nice it is to pull up and it's like, if you want to, you can just go inside and take a nap. and talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, so you have a cooler of food and in your suitcase. You know, now we come here, you know, we only do this now, you know, for this time duck hunting and then oh, over the oh, What are you doing? It's a fair Leave it. He was the cutest, happy-go-lucky little dude yeah. you ever seen in your lifetime. Right, but he was dumb as nails. But he was dumb as nails. But he was sweet. Nope. Pretty cool. And what did you say happened to your, your black lab? You were eating them eggs for some reason? Oh, with Max? Yeah. And I'm watching the fire. Yeah. So so what? Yeah, Day one. And yes. it was like, I was, yeah. was I up there last weekend? Was I up there last week? Yeah. Opening grouse hunting. Yeah, I go up there and it's like, yeah, it's, it's going to get down to, what was it, 38 degrees yeah. or something? Me and you were texting and it was yeah. like 38 degrees at the cabin or something like that. When we were camping here, and you'd hear boats go off in the middle of the night, they, they'd all go out to you. To, yes. He said, "Yeah, but we, we never come up to two of us." No. He was him and my dead dad and us boys. Huh. Okay. Today, I don't know. I thought you said that you and Moeller would hunt it on the island, and it was like a sand beach coming up to it. Because he no, told you, we, because we hunted, but he was up on on Island Lake above the Lake. Oh, and that's where he told you not to let him see the whites of your eyes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah huh. and he said they'll see your eyes, and and then you know if he missed anything, he'd say. Oh, you, 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 you didn't have your brown clothes on, so they seen your hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so funny. You know, I was the bad guy then. You know? but, but, but all I remember, it was so foggy. And I looked at him and he put it in. He always he had a Oh, he was a wino. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I think the earliest person that We're I ever probably would going be. down the, yeah. the lake road. Oh, that's right. That's where you always yeah. used to yeah. hunt, wasn't it? You bring it? your little canoe and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he really liked 
No. 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 I'll turn the lantern on here in a minute. Yeah. Now, a little piece of steak. A lighter for. Slice with potatoes, onions, and more yeah. mushrooms and carrots. Oh, that sounds good. Ready? Yes. That's all cooked well. You get to go on the minute mail to right through that place. Don't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on there. No, they're not happening. Those are like. I've got a baked potato cooking over here right now. Pretty soon I'm going to throw on a chuck steak. My dad just stopped over here and he, I mean, I was just over there and I have over an hour of video footage of just stories being told from the past. I did not realize that the tradition up here started even before my, the person that brought my, brought my grandfather up here, the first year he came up to this spot for duck hunting was 1912. So it's been forever. 
and then my grandfather came up and then my dad's first year up here was when he was 12 years old now he's 75 anyway uh and now you know sarah's not up here zach's not up here and my dad come over here and just a couple minutes ago and he said it really is a little different without sarah or zachary or whatever up here because like i said i have over an hour of footage of just old stories being told and it's not being told to the younger generation Okay, everyone, well, it's bedtime. Just bringing that lantern in here for two minutes. It's totally warm in here, but it's not that cold outside. Good morning everybody, 24 hours from now we'll be out in the duck blind and according to the weather it'll probably be raining. Looks like it's going to be a beautiful sunrise.
not seeing much for ducks flying around. I jumped five or six when I came into the opening over there. There was one nice flock of maybe 10 or 15. I don't know if they were ringbills or I don't think they'd be bluebills yet this early in the season. And I've seen a few uh, wood ducks flying around, but nothing, uh, nothing substantial. I need to figure out where I'm going to pull my canoe in this year. I tell you what, what is flying around is the mosquitoes, <laughs> that's for sure. Today the wind is kind of out of the south and the east, which is a good wind for our bay here that we hunt. Tomorrow now it's supposed to be out of the south and thunderstorms raining, wind out of the south. South is not good. Uh, south and west is the worst. Anything out of the east here works well. I'm just going to pull my canoe straight in here tomorrow. I'll have my waders so I can stand on these little bogs and pull myself back. Looks like I'll have one open spot right there. I bet you that that bunch of cattails right there is loose and I could pull that right in here. Maybe not. I don't know. By the time they fly by, I don't think they're going to see me anyway. Or they will have already saw me, so it doesn't matter. When my brother Chris and I were kids, we would come out here and sit. We considered this an island, which it is an island, and that's an island. So we would come out and sit at the islands duck hunting. I mean, when we were first started at 11 years old, we had to hunt the bay with my grandpa or my dad, which you can just walk to from camp. And then as we got, I don't know how old, <laughs> we started coming out here. That was my island right there. This was Chris's right here, and he had more cattails here to the water, so he built a little stand that was elevated into a tree there. And we would come out with one canoe, and we would trade off who had to take the canoe to the island that day. Because if somebody shoots a duck, we didn't have dogs back then, the person with the canoe then would have to go out and retrieve the ducks. So anyway, I haven't been on the island for a while. Uh, duck hunting used to start at noon, so we would always go out to my island right here and we would start a fire and cook hot dogs and stuff and just, you know, make sure nobody comes out here. And I think when Sarah started duck hunting, um, I think it was still at like 9 o'clock in the morning and it's just been recently, maybe five years ago, that they dropped it down to starting a half hour before sunrise. So anyway, let's go take a look at the old island. Teresa actually sits on the island now, the last uh, couple of years she has. The cattails used to go way out for a while, they would be kind of like they are now. Then they were growing way out, so you really couldn't sit on the island and shoot any ducks. And now that they've kind of come back in again, uh, you can sit here and the ducks will come close enough so you can hit them. I used to have a, a little blind built up maybe a foot off the ground here and then it would go over here. This was a bigger bunch of brush and I would just stand right here and uh, I could shoot ducks. It used to be much more open up here trying to find the spot where we would always have a fire. We used to have it right in here if it was a nice day. This is kind of the top of the island but like I said there wasn't all this brush wasn't here then it was much more open. And if it was raining, we would come down here. These pine trees were much smaller then. But we'd get underneath here because we'd be a little bit protected and we could have a little fire. 
uh, we had these little cook stoves that we would start and uh, cook whatever our snack was, hot dog or whatever. On a dry year, you can actually walk to the island. It's a long walk from camp. And on a wet year, you have to have waders. When my dad was a kid, for a while, he would walk from camp every morning for duck hunting with his waders out here, and he would hunt the island also. When we would hunt the islands, there was a group of three guys that always sat on the point that I sit on now. Every year they were there for opener. And we would sit here. Back then, he didn't have camouflage shotguns or nothing, so you wouldn't really be able to see them. But then when the ducks were coming up the uh, river, you would see their guns flash. And we knew flash from like the sunlight onto the barrel. And Chris and I both knew then that ducks were coming, so we would get ready. Because my point is, like, if you just go straight line right over there, that's where I sit. That's where we were just at when I was in the canoe before. times when uh, after the morning hunt you take this back way to get over to to get back to where I put the canoe in and you'll jump ducks in here this is the water is way high this year usually this is, well, there's some ducks flying out of there right now usually this is more of a passageways you go through Let's see if all the late risers have woke up yet. Oh, there was a few out there, but you know, nothing really big. They keep stuff pretty warm. Of course, if it was, you know, 10 degrees out, it probably wouldn't keep them warm. So. I'll probably go out grow something in a little while, but the woods are still so wet from the dew from overnight. I think I better set up the wood stove in the, the fish house there because it's definitely going to rain tomorrow and uh, I don't want to set that up in the rain. And I'm going to need something to dry stuff out.
I can definitely feel the heat coming off of that just with that little bit I put in there. I did buy a couple of those logs that you put in that'll burn for like three hours so I could just cut like a third of it and put it in there at a time. Or I can put charcoal in there too. I mean, you don't want to have a roaring fire. This thing gets so hot so fast in here. But if everything is wet tomorrow and I hang it in here, it'll dry. and Teresa went to try a couple of trails for grouse hunting and I'm gonna go try these two up here that I always try I did not I don't think I jumped anything on there last year but uh, then we're just gonna meet back there and we'll figure out if anybody's seen any grouse Oh, didn't jump anything on the way in here. I've never in my life been up here and the mosquitoes been this bad. They are just dive bombing me. Luckily for me, that's my second trail. I don't have to move that tree. just driving down this road and a guy was on a, one of those UTVs and he I stopped and talked to him and he watches both channels his name is Chris and he had his friend there I, I already forgot I'm horrible on names and so anyway it was nice talking to them I was gonna hit one more trail but I think I'll head back to camp first because that's 20 minutes to 12 it's almost lunchtime I'm going to heat up my piece of steak from last night that I didn't finish. And I brought up a chunk of this ham from the house. I'm going to heat up a piece of that. I think I'll have a banana and a little bag of chips and a glass of milk and that should be good. Outdoor microwave right there. Chris and Teresa just got back from grouse hunting and they hit some really good areas and walked the trail and then went off the trail and busted the woods and then they had both dogs with them and didn't jump, didn't even hear one or anything, no grouse.
Well, my dad was just over here for about 45 minutes. We were just sitting and talking, but what I was doing before that here and what I finished doing, I put a tarp over part of this. I don't have a tarp to go over the whole thing. Um, apparently these are waterproof, but then I was reading that you should uh, put seam sealer on the seams. So, which I, I did do that, but then I was thinking, okay, if it's supposed to rain so much, possibly, uh, I wanted to get it covered so it's covered where I sleep because I don't want to find out at 2 o'clock in the morning that this thing is not waterproof. Um, I, <laughs> but it's kind of neat now because three quarters of it is covered and part of it isn't, so I will be able to tell if it is waterproof or not. And I, you know, if it drips over on that part of it, I don't care because I'll be sleeping on that backside. I think I'll go back and cut a little bit more wood because if it does rain tomorrow I'm not going to want to go out and cut any wood. So I think I'll do that right now while it's still nice out and get that stacked up. We should be doing good for firewood for a while. I even cut up this rotted one. That's a good one to throw on at night, just let it smolder. Well, now that I have all the firewood I need for a while, I need to get some uh, fire starter stuff because, you know, you think it's really simple, but once it rains out, none of this stuff is going to be dry. It's going to all be hard to light. I have a couple of nice uh, fires right there that can be started with the dry stuff. I'll just keep that in here. Kind of the key to uh, a good camping experience is just being prepared for when things aren't going to be nice. Like it would really suck if it started to rain and rained all day yesterday and nothing got ready. Uh, then you're going to have a miserable time. But if you're prepared, it'll be fun no matter what. It was, huh? That's a nice size one too. Awesome. Here, here. Oh. Well, at least we got one gross. That's pretty sweet. Well, my dad was just over here for about an hour. Johan is up here now. I think pretty soon I'm going to get my duck hunting stuff ready for tomorrow morning. Nothing worse than trying to do that in the dark or in the morning for sure. I don't want to do it then.
if it's not raining out there, I like to start my little stove and uh, cook some of this stuff up and have a little snack out there. If it's raining, it's not going to happen. It'll just be get out there and get back in here. Hopefully it's not going to be thundering and lightning and stuff, because if it is, then a person isn't going to want to really go out on the water. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all ready for the rain? Pretty much, yeah. I got everything. I'm just now getting all my duck hunting stuff ready, so I don't have. It'll take me just as long to cook three pork steaks as it will to do one, so I might as well cook them. And if it is happen to be raining tomorrow, all I have to do is either eat it cold, or maybe I can heat it up on the wood stove or something. But those potatoes are going to have to cook for a little while before I throw the steaks on. Okay everyone, well it's just about 10 o'clock at night. I have my alarm set I believe for about 3.45 in the morning. They say that storms are going to start about 3.45 in the morning. But regardless, the Minnesota Duck Hunting Opener 2019 begins in the morning. I just heard the first boat go out.
It's 3.45 in the morning right now. I could not fall asleep. I did hear another boat go up the river too, so one car drove by. And I could see lights from boats out by the boat landing going out too. Good luck! Well, we have about 45 minutes to shooting time. It's 72 degrees. Hopefully that rain will hold off till, what did it say, 9.30 or 9.15 or whatever. Haven't heard one duck fly over yet. Ten minutes until the season opens. Still have not saw a duck fly by yet, but if nothing else, I can definitely shoot mosquitoes. I just shot my first duck. Two of them came in and landed. I shot one of them. That's all I've seen so far. Delicious. I think I'm going to paddle out there and grab that duck. I haven't shot for an, over an hour. I don't think my brother Chris has shot at all. Teresa did shoot. She might have got one. I think Johan shot, but I don't think my brother Chris even fired one shell. It's a nice ring bill.
I'm just picking up the decoys now and starting to hear thunder and uh, I haven't seen a duck in ages so I think I'll head back to camp. Well, I'm back here now. The rain has stopped and uh, let's just when I was getting into the canoe, there was the video where I was pulling the canoe down into the water. I took the camera, put it in the canoe, and my Canon 77D dumped into the water. I have it trying to dry out here. It would not come back on at all. I mean, we it's fully insured, so I can get a new one, but um, hopefully it'll come back. So then what you just saw out in the boat was all cell phone coverage. And now, luckily in my truck, I have my camera bag. I've got my old Sony Handycam here. And this is what I'll be finishing this weekend out with, unless uh, this baby starts back up again. Well, I'm going to go clean this duck so that's finished now that we have a little window of no rain. Sounds like, well, according to the radar thing, it might come back maybe around 2 o'clock. This trail right here is where I shot my first buck probably 35 years ago. They've logged it out now. It looks a lot different than it did then, but uh, I'm gonna walk in there and see if anything looks familiar. I just jumped a grouse, shot twice at a grouse, and totally missed a grouse that I should have had. That's my first one that jumped up this year though. I <laughs> wasn't used to that. I thought I saw a grouse over on this side of the road, so I'm going really slow. I just thought I saw a glimpse. And then as I'm standing here, one flushed behind me, which you can't see over here because there's too many leaves. And then 20 or 30 seconds later, another one flushed when I was looking over here, but I never saw it. They were in their ways. So this must be the place to be for grouse. But this is about where I was when I shot, uh, where I was when I shot my first buck. And it wasn't my first deer. My first deer was a doe, and I think I shot that on my second year. This was maybe my fifth year. Chris and I decided to kind of break away from hunting where my dad was hunting, and we came up here with just a little 8x8 tent. And I don't even know... We might have went hunting with my dad on opener and then came up here a later weekend because there was a big snowstorm coming that day. 
And after I shot the deer and we drug it out, we actually drove home that night because that snow was so bad. But um, this wasn't even where I was sitting. I, w I had another spot I was sitting in, but wasn't seeing anything. Came over here, uh, found a scrape, and I just went and, and it was the afternoon hunt. And I just came in here and I sat next to a stump and I had a light green blanket. I remember that. And I had the blanket over me. And it was snowing hard and I fell asleep. And I don't know how long it was I woke up and there was like an inch or two inches of snow that was kind of gathering over the blanket. And I thought, looking down the trail, and keep in mind, none of this had been logged, so it was just big trees that looked completely not the spot you'd come for deer. And uh, I thought I saw a flash of brown, didn't think anything of it, but I was looking that direction. And it just was coming up the trail. I think it had a spike on one side and a fork on the other. No, maybe it was just a spike on both sides. Anyway, it came up. I was shooting my 35 um, Marlin, no scope and it came up and I shot and then it ran off to the right and then I waited till my brother Chris came because I can't see red very well he can't see it very well either but two is better than one for tracking and in the snow you could easily see it and it didn't go very far and it was underneath a pine tree so yeah this is where I got my first buck this is about 150 yards down from where I was just telling you about the deer somebody else has a stand here here they haven't logged out. This is more what it looked like when I was deer hunting. I came out of the woods up on top of that hill. I walked down and then that trail ended and it looked like there was an opening. So I walked another 50 yards or so and I come into this opening and then I didn't know where I was until I get up here. And you see that little, there's like a little pond down there that they dug. At one time this was pretty flat. And we actually deer hunted. We set up a big wall tent right here the same year that they logged this area. They dug it all out here now. That was years and years ago. It was like, I don't know where I'm at, but now I do. This will bring me back out to the road, and then I just got to take a left and go find my truck. There's my truck. That wasn't so bad. I'm going to remember that walk. It's a nice loop.
morning when I woke up, I think, what was it, 67 degrees, and uh, the morning before it was warm like that. Tonight now it's supposed to get down to 49 or 50 or maybe 51. It's going to seem a lot cooler. I was just uh, messaging with Melissa and uh, trying to think of it like my kids, if Sarah would have come up, this would have been her 19th, I think, or 20th year. And for, so for the last 19 or 20 years, there has always been at least one kid up here. At first there was three, and then um, sometimes Zachary and Sarah are up here, sometimes just Zach, sometimes just Sarah. So this is the first time in 19 or 20 years that I've been here in my camp all by myself. So it seemed, and I was just sitting here thinking, it's like, why aren't I over at Chris and Teresa's camp all the time? It's because we never were always over there. We had stuff going on here, and then we go over there and visit. So it just seems weird. It's actually kind of peaceful, um, you know, not having a ton of stuff to do. But at the same time, it's kind of sad, and I, I miss not having the kids up here. Most of my stuff is pretty dry now. I talked to Zachary on the phone for a while too about the camera. I've tried several times today to get this one to come on and put the fan on it and everything and it just won't. So I mean it's just completely dead. So anyway I'll pull the lens off of it and this has to get sent in and they either fix it or they send you a brand new one back. But we're going to go ahead and order another brand new one because uh, deer hunting is coming up. What if it takes them six weeks to figure that out and deer hunting is here? I want to make sure I'm using this camera and not the handy cam that I'm filming on right now. Just pull out five fighters. I want three of them. Must wrap them on one time yeah. so you can sit on it. Oh, and then he would have something flat to sit on. Never worked. I'm going to go bring all the stuff that took all day to dry out, bring it inside. The radar is saying that that possibly could hit here. It seems to be going to the right, but it's also moving west towards us. So, And it goes way back, so if it's coming west, you can see lightning in there and stuff. But I'm going to bring everything inside. Definitely have some rain coming down now. It's comfy in here. I brought the, if you bring a big lantern in here when it's as warm as it is out, uh, it gets too hot. So I just brought the one uh, mantle lantern in here and it warms it up pretty nice. When I saw this on radar, it wasn't a huge, um, you know, like wall of rain. It was just like a, I don't know, a blob that was coming this way. Everybody else went to bed at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. <laughs> I'm like, I, if I went to bed at 8 o'clock, I'd be up, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'd be up by 12 or 1 o'clock, and I would be up for the rest of the day. I 
I need to find a stove for this um, fish house tent that is about the size of a coffee can. It really takes hardly anything to heat it. I have the alarm set for 355. It's just about 940 right now, so I guess I'll see you guys in about six hours. Good morning everybody. It's about a quarter after four right now. I'm just bringing my shell box down here. Looks like we have clear skies this morning, a little bit of a breeze. I only heard one truck drive by. Yesterday there was a ton of them, but today only one is driven by here. Normally Sunday, which is today, is a way worse day for ducks than Saturday was, but I don't know how it can get any worse than it was yesterday. Looks like we got a pretty stiff breeze here this morning. It's totally going the wrong direction, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Oh, I got tucked back into the cattails here. Kind of blocks the wind. The wind is actually a little bit chilly this morning, but it's pretty nice in here. minutes until shooting time and once again I have not heard one duck fly over.
Well, it's about an hour since shooting time started. I have not shot one shell. I think I'm going to pick up my few decoys and head back in. No reason to sit here and just watch the waves. Everything that's flying is way up there. Well, at least Johan got a teal and a wood duck, and I think Chris got a female ringbill. <laughs> I landed in my decoy, so it wasn't very far away. I had a three and a half inch. <laughs> Well, my dad's heading out right now. Time for me to break camp and head south.
Okay, everyone. Well, it's as clean or cleaner than when I got here. Everything is packed up right now. It was super nice having my dad up here this year. Even though he didn't uh, hunt, uh, next year he should be able to, but um, it was nice having him up here. Let's go uh, grab the trailer, run down and grab the canoe, get that strapped on, strap that other container that I have all the lanterns in on, and it'll be time to head south. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. I will see you guys on the next video.